السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. First of all, barakallahu fikum for allowing me to be with you all. It's a great honor to be here. Uh, with this is a very nice tradition to read the translation of the verses. Mashallah, very very nice. Um, first thing is that we should start by being grateful. The, to be able to have a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can come to to establish the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to engage in the congregational prayer is a great blessing. This is the first point. The second point is that the prayer itself is a great blessing. And we think about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his retreats to the cave of Hira and you know, many scholars, they said, and they, he would go to the cave of Hira, essentially he was worshipping, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he didn't know exactly what that should look like per se. But he would go to retreat and to think about Allah and to worship Allah and to, you know. And then eventually, when the revelation begins, shortly after that, then the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is taught how to pray. And so this salah is... A huge gift actually. That many, many people live their lives deep down inside. Look at the verse that was read, subhanAllah. The verse that was read about. And then when when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the souls of everyone and he bore, he made them bear witness. Am I not your Lord? And they said, verily, you're our Lord. So deep down inside, everybody has this desire to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone has a desire to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes it's covered up by many different types of things. Sometimes it's covered up by our desire for power, our desire for wealth, our distractions from material things or whatever else it might be. It's covered up, but deep down inside people want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how many times have we seen people who come into Islam and then the first thing they say is, I realized that I was always a Muslim. But all of that time they didn't know how to pray. They didn't know about zakat, they didn't know about fasting, they didn't know about hajj, they didn't know about the basic teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about how to live their life, what to do, what not to do. So this is a great, great, tremendous gift to be able to say, Ya Allah, we believe in you, we submit to you, and we know that you have asked us to do this prayer, that you have given us the blessing of this prayer, and through the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam have showed us how to worship you, and we thank you Allah for this blessing. And when uh, my dear brother, Dr. Asad, spoke, we spoke about doing this uh, uh, small reminder, the verse that came to mind for me was the verse in Surah Taha, where Allah says, He says, I chose you. So listen to what is being revealed to you. Allah is speaking to Sayyidina Musa alayhi And I, I chose you and listen to what is being revealed to you. Then he says what? Verily I am Allah. There is no God but me. And this is the key really, subhanAllah, you know. Why does someone come to Salah on Friday, on Saturday morning at 6 o'clock, 6.15 in the morning? Why does someone come during the week before they have work? Why does, why does, why does one do this? That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when you see someone coming regularly to the Salah in the Masjid, then bear witness to their Iman. Like, know that they're a believer. You know that this person is a believer. Why? Because this person who's regular in the Salah, it's a sign that they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, and Allah says, so know that I am Allah, there's no God. فَعْبُدْنِي وَأَقِّمِ الصَّلَاةِ لِذِكْرِي So worship me. Worship me. And, and be in this sincere, loving devotion to me and establish the prayer for my remembrance. They say that there's two major meanings for this verse, actually. One of them is not the one we're going to focus on, but it's the one where the Prophet them said that the person who sleeps through their salat or they forget it, then the way for them to make up for that is that they pray it when they remember it, right? So one way to think about the verse, actually, is and establish the prayer when you remember me. So if the person forgot to pray, but then they remember, oh, subhanAllah, I forgot my Dhuhr prayer, I forgot my Asr prayer, Bismillah, and they pray it, and they establish that Salah. 
which by the way is what we're supposed to do. This Prophet ﷺ said that that's how they make up for it. It doesn't, yes, we should hold ourselves accountable, but we should also keep moving in the right direction. The Prophet ﷺ taught us that when we do something wrong, we follow it with something good and it erases it. So there's a positivity to it. So this, uh, we miss the prayer, we remember it, we make the prayer. The second possibility they say in the meanings is that uh, establish this prayer so that you may remember me. So that you may remember me. And this I think is of course the more, uh, not apparent, but maybe the thing that comes to mind first. That we establish the prayer to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when we have these prayers throughout the day, actually that's why many of the ulama and the righteous people, they were very consistent in the mid-morning prayer, the duha, and the, because this, this period from Fajr to Dhuhr is too long without a prayer. Not too long in a bad sense. But like, they want to pray. So I have to do some prayer in between. And then, so you do the Fajr, and you do the mid-morning prayer, and you do the Dhuhr prayer, you do the Asr prayer, you do the Maghrib prayer, you do the Aisha prayer. So the entire day basically becomes a day of dhikr and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, of course, is what we want to do. And we should recognize and realize that the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings a light to our lives. And we don't want to live in darkness. And one of the beautiful things about coming to Fajr prayer is that you can witness the daybreak, right? the falaq. And the daybreak is a, is a tremendously hopeful thing. You have this darkness covers everything. And the thing about darkness is that one of the things that you have all these forms around us, right? Like if we were in this room, you have people, you have pillars, you have chairs, you have bookshelves, you have all of these different things. When you're in darkness, you can't see any of them. If it's truly dark, you can't see any of them, right? But as, as soon as there's a little bit of illumination, then the forms begin to take shape. So you're like, oh, I think there's something over there. I'm not really sure what it is, but something's over there. And then as there becomes a little bit more light, a little bit more light, a little bit more light, then things become more and more clear. And the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what brings clarity to our lives. I mean, everything is dark actually without the remembrance of Allah. Everything is dark without the worship of Allah. When we begin to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sun begins to rise in a sense on our hearts. The sun begins to rise on our minds. We're able to see things as they truly are. Oh, this thing I thought it mattered, it doesn't actually matter that much. This thing I was really worried about it, it's not actually something to be worried about. This thing I wasn't paying attention to it, it's actually very important. I need to take this thing seriously. But the light becomes, it starts to come. And so like when we come in the morning and you see the, you start to see slowly but surely the hills start to become more and more clear. So as we keep regular in the Salat, the heart begins to be more and more clear. And so we establish the Salat in order to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever we find ourselves, therefore, without enough remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives, the easiest and most important way to regain that is to recommit to the establishment of the prayer. So I don't know what's happening with this, what's happening with my relations. Commit to the prayer. And especially commit to prayer in the masjid. You know, mashallah, everyone is here. This is a beautiful thing. Commit to prayer in the masjid. At least, you know, whatever we're doing, commit to something. And then that commitment will bring more and more light, inshallah, into our lives. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our lives always filled with His remembrance, to make our lives always filled with His love and His obedience, to make everything that we do an act of worship and an act of remembrance of Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to open our hearts and our minds and our bodies to His remembrance. And that He makes every single step and every single moment and every single breath and every single word and every single action, all of it dhikr for Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask that Allah illuminates our lives and our homes and our families, that He protects us and our loved ones. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives victory and aid to our brothers and sisters in Palestine, that He alleviates their suffering, and that He aids them in everything that they need and everything that they're in need of. Ya Allah, Ya Arhamun Rahimin. We ask Allah to guide us and to give us light in everything that we do in front of us and behind us and on the left and on the right and above us and below us. Ya Allah, Ya Nur as Samawati wal Ard. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi wa barakatuh. Zakum al-Khair.